This is the Ride One Up Cafe Cruiser, and I've been cruising around on this bike for the past few weeks, and overall, it's been a really comfortable experience. This bike has a ton of features here and gonna run through some of them and then get into some of my likes and dislikes about the bike. First off, this is their Latte colorway. They do sell a dark blue and a carbon gray color as well. The gray color looks really nice, but if you do want a brighter or lighter colored bike like this, I think this Latte color is a good off-white option. This is their XR or step over version of the bike. They do sell a step through model as well, but it is a bit more expensive but that option is available if you're into that. This bike can also support up to 350 pounds of cargo, so the rider plus any cargo you might have with you. This is a lot higher than some of the other bikes I've seen out there. The bike has a rated range of 30 to 50 miles. I found that pretty accurate in my testing. I did about a 20 mile bike ride and still had about half battery left over. So we're right in that range. The bike itself weighs about 65 pounds. So it's not something that is gonna be great for carrying around for extended distances. This is really more of a long distance cruiser type bike. And I think you see that with a lot of the features this bike brings. Even though this is an e-bike, you do have some gears to mess around with here. You have seven different gear options if you wanna adjust this and ride this more as a true bike. And you do have five different pedal assist options out of the box. Standard, you can get this bike up to a little over 20 miles an hour, but there is a speed unlock like a lot of other e-bikes on the market. If you do wanna unlock the speed on this, and I got it up to over 28 miles per hour which seems to be what it can do with a full throttle, but then pedaling on top of that, you can get it going a little bit faster. The main difference here is that big comfortable seat. It's even got integrated shocks into the seat as well. So going over bumps on this thing was super comfortable. On top of that, you've got more of a curved handlebar, which actually kind of puts you in a more of an upright position compared to some other bikes that have you leaning more forward over the handlebars. This is a really comfortable, just cruising position, if you will. And the only weird part of the screen here is that since it is on those curved handlebars, it's in kind of a weird position. I actually ended up moving this display up towards kind of the center of this, so it's easier to see but I've also realized that's now causing a problem when I wanna change settings or adjust my pedal. I have to pull my hand completely off the handlebar, reach over here, do that, and then go back to the handlebar here. So I may end up moving that back to see if that's a little bit easier to mess with. You've also got this huge rear rack and there's lots of different accessory options with this, either directly through Ride One Up or if you just wanna strap something down to the bike. There are integrated lights here as well, so you can turn those on by pressing and holding on the plus button on the screen there and that'll turn on the front and rear light. Only downside I saw here is the front light does tend to get blocked by just the variety of wires up front. Even if you move them out of the way, as soon as you turn the handlebars, that tends to get blocked again. So not a huge deal, cause it's not gonna block the light completely, but there are some weird shadows just with all the wires there. I also found that the rear light does not blink when you're slowing down. On some of the other e-bikes I've tried, this rear light will blink, which is really nice if you are doing riding on the street where you've got a lot more people that are looking out for you on the road. This just adds a little bit more visibility. And unfortunately, this bike does not have that. Some other comfort features here, you've also got these really wide tires. I was a big fan of these. They're not so wide that you feel like you're driving this massive bike, but they're wide enough that they're gonna smooth out a lot of the bumps you'll ride over. As for the battery, you can charge this while it is inside the bike, but this does also remove with the included key. Only weird part here is it does drop out of the bottom of the bike, so it can be a little bit difficult to slide that battery out, but not impossible. And you can charge it away from the bike as well. So if you wanna bring this inside or bring it closer to an outlet so you don't have to move this entire bike, you have that option as well. As for riding this bike, overall, like I've said, it is just a comfortable experience. It's got really smooth acceleration. I like using that throttle to get me going so I don't have to mess with any of the gears when I am pedaling. You've got those five pedal assist options so you can keep that lower when you're on a bike path or raise it all the way up when you're on more residential streets. And I just had a great time riding this thing. It's gotten me from point A to point B very comfortably and smoothly and just had a lot of fun along the way. Only downside I noticed with some of the long distance riding was going uphill. 
this required a lot of pedaling and the throttle isn't enough to get you up there alone. So I don't know if this is a torque setting that I need to adjust on the bike or it's just the weight of the bike itself, but that is one thing I noticed riding around. Design and materials here is really impressive. This is very similar to the LMTD bike I tested from Ride One Up. They just did a great job with a lot of the materials here. Very nice finish on the bike, looks really well put together. Uh, even down to the fenders, usually you get these plastic kind of uh, flimsy fenders on the bike. This one actually had metal ones included. This bike was really easy to assemble as well. I liked that most of the parts of the bike were already put on and I really didn't have to spend a lot of time putting this thing together when I got it. I could just get right to riding. So overall, I would recommend this bike to a few different types of people. I think if you're gonna be using this bike for commuting, especially along kind of long flat surfaces where you might need some extra cargo space with that rear rack and just want a comfortable ride when you're getting to work, this is a great option for that. If you want this more as a recreational bike, again, if you're doing kind of those long distance, long haul rides, and want that extra space, that extra comfort, this is gonna be great for you, especially if you just stick to the paths. If you are gonna be looking towards more off-road riding or grass riding or things like that, this probably isn't the best bike. This does a lot better in more kind of road and path conditions. So you might wanna look elsewhere if you're looking for a bike that does that. So that is my short review here of the Ride One Up Cafe Cruiser. If you have any questions about the bike or just my riding experience, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.